What I have in my hands here is a Jeffries Anglo Concertina. And if you know anything about concertinas, you'll know that the Jeffries is pretty much the holy grail. I've been playing the concertina a few years and I've owned a couple of pretty decent Frank Edgeley hybrid instruments. And when we say hybrid, it means they're concertinas, but they've got accordion reeds. But very nicely made, lovely to play, they've got a good sound. But I thought, do I want to make the step up to a Jeffries? I was actually pretty fortunate because I found a chap called David Robertson, who is a fettler in this country, in the UK here. And um, he very kindly lent me this one for a week to see if I liked it. We're in the middle of the uh, coronavirus here, of course. It's 2020, so I couldn't go up to his house to, to try it out. So he, like I say, agreed to send it to me. No obligation whatsoever. Having owned it for a week, I decided that I wanted to keep it. And I'm going to explain to you why I made that decision. First of all, what is it really like? How much different is it to uh, a decent hybrid? I will show you my GD, Frank Edgley. It's, an, it's a lovely instrument. One thing that I was mistaken about is I thought that the Jefferies would be a lot heavier, but actually they're pretty much the same weight. Possibly I'd say this is slightly lighter, which really surprised me. Now this instrument was made by uh, C. Jefferies, and hopefully I can show you the, the stamp on the, on the end plate. It's always on the right hand end plate, well I think nearly always. So between the top row and the second row, Hopefully you'll be able to see C. Jeffries, and just below the second row you'll be able to see the word maker. So that C. Jeffries maker on the on the end plate on that right hand end plate makes this concertina probably around about an 18, 90, um, give or take 10 years instrument. So at the time of doing this video, it's about 130 years old. Now obviously an awful lot of it has been replaced in that time. Uh, David has put a brand new set of bellows. I believe he makes the bellows himself. And they've got these lovely papers. I'll just show you that there. Put it out a bit. Obviously the end plates are original. And I'm guessing the buttons are as well. They're made of nickel, I believe. Like I say, I'm not expert. This is a 38 key instrument. Standard Anglo is 30 keys. Three rows of five on each side. This has got a few extra notes, which I still getting to grips with and it's got obviously the air button here we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute and it also has a drone key over here this instrument is what we call a B flat F which is not that unusual but fairly unusual in the world of Anglo concertinas uh, the most common pair of keys is C G G D is the next one and then probably B flat F and there's a few A flat E flats knocking around but this is a B flat F and I bought this I think Possibly it makes it slightly cheaper. I'm not certain about that, but I think being B flat F it's not quite as desirable as a CG. Although for me, I was very pleased to get B flat F because my two Frank Edgeleys are a CG and a GD, so it's given me another couple of keys to play in. Let's talk about this drone key a little bit, shall we? There's the air button on the right hand side. And the drone key is in exactly the same place on the left hand side. And what it gives us is a B flat note in both directions. So that's great if you want to do a kind of a bagpipes effect like um See that's really nice for that isn't it? And I don't have that on my uh, two hybrids because they're just straightforward 30 button instruments. This is a Jeffries layout with a few eccentricities. Um, I haven't quite got to grips with those yet. We've got the three rows. Row number one, row nearest to me has got six on both sides. On the right hand side I've got seven buttons, so two extra. And on the left hand side I've got six, that's one extra. And the two accidental rows are the usual five each. So you know, I've only had this a couple of weeks. I'm still, as I say, getting to grips with it. And I found it very different from my Edgeley concertinas, but I'm really enjoying it. I'll talk about this air button because I've had the instrument about a week and I found that I was getting a pain in my thumb. When I really looked into it, I noticed that my thumb was not up against the air button. It was quite a way away from it. And the problem was, 
that the wrist bars at this end here where the thumb goes through to the air button which is there they were quite thick and it meant my thumb was quite away from the air button so I was having to move my thumb in every time and so David very kindly uh, took the wrist bars and cut them down for me I just took them off and sent them to him and uh, he turned it around within a couple of days it was amazing I sent them off first thing Monday morning and Thursday they were back again and obviously did both sides and so that's great for the air button on this side and the drone button on this side just happens to be the way my thumbs are probably wouldn't bother most people but that bit there is a lot thinner there which means my thumb is grazing the air button which is the way I like it I like to kind of uh, kind of ride it all the while I'm playing so I can try and keep the bellows at the same width and that's a, a thing I try and do not everyone plays in that way but that's the way I like to play if I can so what is original and what isn't? Well, I think the buttons are original and I think the end plates are and obviously these end wooden ends are. They've been stripped down and French polished. I mean, David's made a beautiful job of this, I have to say. Um, like I said, the bellows are brand new and the straps are brand new. They've got this kind of gold tooling on them. I've got to be very honest and say I haven't always liked the sound of a Jeffreys concertina. Some of them are actually very, very piercing indeed. The CGs, if you're on the G row and very high up, that can be very, very piercing. What kind of sold it to me was hearing them played out, outside in the open air, if you like, where they really sound amazing. What else is different? Let's show you that the two concertinas side by side here. So here's the right hand end of both instruments. You'll see the buttons on the Frank Edgley, they're much bigger than the ones on the Jeffreys, okay? And I find the ones on the Edgley more comfortable, I have to say. I like the bigger buttons, but it might be just because I'm used to them. It's taken me a, a little bit of a while to get used to these uh, kind of needle buttons on the Jeffreys, but um, I thought I might struggle with them, but I am beginning to get used to them. It's a very responsive instrument. And it's such a, a lovely clear sound. So I'd had this a week or so and I took it apart and sent the wrist bars back to David for him to work on and so then I went back to my Edgley and it certainly did sound different. All I can say is I'm glad I've got my Edgley Constantinians because they're very useful for work, for teaching but for playing pleasure you really can't beat this. It's just an absolutely brilliant clear sound. It takes a bit of getting used to like I say it's a bit because it's a bit like caviar, it's kind of an acquired taste, but once you get the taste for it, it's hard to go back. One thing you might be worrying about is the extra buttons. Do they get in the way? Do they confuse you? And I have to say they don't. Weirdly enough, as I've been playing all the pieces that I've learned just from my 30 button instruments, I haven't found the extra buttons a problem. I haven't particularly used them that much yet, but certainly just putting my fingers down in my normal place, I've found my notes without any problems at all, so that, that might be something that's worrying you, but don't worry about that. For me, anyway, it's not been a problem. What you really have to ask yourself with these types of instruments is, are they worth the money? This is the most expensive instrument I've ever bought, including a Beckstein grand piano, so that gives you some idea of the cost. These things really aren't cheap, so you've, you've got to really want one to, to pay the money. Are they worth it? Mm, that's if you've got the money yes I guess they are I couldn't put my hand on my heart and say this is worth three or four times uh, what my Frank Edgley concertinas are worth but it has got a great sound it's a lovely thing to own I think what I'll do now is take this right hand end off and show you the uh, the action and um, inside and just you know it's quite interesting to see one thing you'll notice I'll show you the difference between the two instruments here again. Right, you'll see that the Jeffreys has got the screw in the middle of each side, whereas the Edgley the screws are at the angles, which I guess holds the plating a bit better. Just a different way of doing it. One thing that is very important if you ever take one of these apart is to make sure you put the screws back in the holes that they come out of. So I always put them in a, a bit of a map on a tabletop uh, as if they were still in the instrument. If you're just taking the whole end off 
and you don't want to see uh, the action then you just leave the screws in but I'm going to show you both so uh, I'm going to stop recording and we'll come back when I've taken the screws off right so here's the inside and you can see the reeds and the valves and they're in these kind of chamois leather compartments now this is the bit I really don't have a clue about whatsoever I know you've got the same thing on the other side if you take that out and I'm guessing this chamois leather uh, is original obviously the hole there makes it easier to pull that out and show you the other side and get into the the inside of the bellows if I just press a button uh, on there you see that hole opening up so air will get into the reed in the normal run of things and the reed will sound you see it's only one reed per note uh, with a concertina not like a melodeon so let's just take the end plate off, being careful that we know where it's going to go back. So this is the inside. Uh, let's just press the button so you can see what actually happens when you press the button. And it's on a little lever and the pad vice is up and uh, air starts to flow through the instrument. I mean, it's pretty basic, but it's... Uh, Quite interesting to see how it's all been refurbished. Uh, got all new pads, uh, bushes on the buttons, but all original levers I'm guessing there. It's just the pads that have been replaced. So this is the air button. Like I say, it doesn't work properly unless it's really in the end plate because obviously the end plate holds the buttons in properly. But anyway, that's what the inside looks like. That's what they call the action. Now I've got to put it all back together again. <laughs> Just going to make sure that the buttons obviously go through the holes, the right holes. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, if you, obviously, if you're doing this all day long, it's nothing. But for me, it's a bit of a worry. Okay, so they've all gone back in. I see the air button there and all the normal note buttons. But we've got to put it back together again now. So I'll be a few minutes. So we'll uh, stop recording and come back. So there we are, all back together successfully. Uh, for somebody like me, it's a bit scary doing something like that. But uh, like I say, if you're used to it, it's nothing really. I've been playing the Melodeon quite a bit longer than I've been playing the Concertina. And I must admit, it took me a while before I could pluck up the courage to pull it apart, have a look at it, see how it works. But it, it, you know, it's a good thing to do. It, and it helps you understand the instrument better. So don't be frightened of it. I mean, the whole point about owning one of these things, I think, is to play it. Is not to put it in a glass case and worship it and baby it, is to actually get the thing out and play it every day, which is what I do. I'm really loving owning this thing and uh, hope to um, pass it on to my children in, in, the, in due course. But it certainly is a lovely, lovely instrument. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend David Robertson to you uh, as a fettler and as a seller of instruments. I know he'll repair your instrument for you and he has a few up for sale from, from time to time. He does specialise in kind of high-end instruments. I can't fault his workmanship and the buying experience was just brilliant. You know, he was really kind. I asked quite a few silly questions uh, and he answered them very politely and very quickly. Sent me photographs of everything. And like I say, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to borrow it for a week, which is very trusting of him. But anyway, I now own it. It's a lovely instrument. The Jeffries B flat F Anglo Concertina. If you're thinking about one and you've got the money, then go for it. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching. It's certainly very loud.